You don't need to be a sci-fi geek to remember the classic Star Wars scene with R2-D2 projecting a hologram of Princess Leia for Obi-Wan and Luke Skywalker. Remember that? Well, we've seen some holograms appear over the years, big and small, but what if your smartphone could project a hologram that you can not only see hovering in front of you, but also interact with? Well, it may be coming sooner than you think. Joining us on the line to learn all about Rise technology is Taylor Scott, founder and chief technical officer at a San Diego-based company called Icon. Welcome to the show, Taylor. Good to chat with you. Hi, nice to meet you. Before we talk about Rise, tell us a bit about yourself and Icon. So I've had a, a rather unique uh, experience in the past um, working with uh, specifically chemical engineering and polymer chemistry. Um, Icon was sort of founded around the ideology of creating a, a new dimension. You know, there's there's been a push in the recent years to create the, the best form of new and improved realities. And so we felt as though we had a unique solution to creating sort of that idealized future that we've seen in films for so many years. And so that's that's what we've been doing for the last four or five years. And we're really excited to be able to bring to the market the, the Rise platform. All right, Rise. It does sound like science fiction to have a hologram hovering above your hand that you can also manipulate. Please tell us what it is exactly. Yeah, it sounds like science fiction. It was inspired by science fiction. I, I can honestly say it, our, my obsessive love of the Star Wars films from my early childhood definitely did uh, did usher along our, our focus on this product. But it literally is a device, a hardware device that, that plugs into the side of your phone that allows you to project um, a lot of the same rendering environments that occur on your phone up into space. So we refer to it as holographic interplay. You can actually use touch control and swipe things out of the phone and they will immediately float up into a holographic space projected in open air. You can, so you can see them and you can also see the natural environment behind you just like you would in the, in the film if you were looking at say Princess Leia and R2-D2. Mm -hmm. um, and even more than that, we actually allow you to have touch control and gesture control of those holograms via the mobile phone. So if you think about all the things you have currently on your mobile phone, all the videos, photos, um, all the things you do for communication, all that can be done in open space volumetric hologram now. Okay, so not only could you download and stream content that are holograms, but you yourself can also turn uh, your regular photos and videos into holograms using the Rise platform. Is that correct? Exactly. For us, it's a, it, we're really passionate about letting people experience everything that they want to in a system like this. A lot of people will, will title, will, they'll use that term hologram very loosely for a, a litany of different products that exist out there on the market. We have a very strict definition at Icon based on really a combination of what people have been seeing in science fiction films, which is it has to be floating and it has to have volume. So you have to be able to move around it and perceive it in a new space. But for us, it's it's the emotional connection of your existing life, your, your social media feed, your photos and videos, the, the, what, that which you share with your family, being able to, to translate that immediately into a volumetric hologram is incredibly powerful. So we'll be giving that to people day one. And, and how would you be able to accomplish that? Let's say I had a still photo of my parents. Now it's projected as a hologram with volume hovering seemingly above or beside the smartphone in thin air. But that photo of my parents wasn't taken from various angles. So how would you accomplish that? Yeah, so we have a unique form of artificial intelligence that we put into each of the applications. We refer to it as neuroadaptive AI, but the, the point of it is, is to create what would be the closest representation of synthetic volume from 2D images. Sure. And there's a, a, a numerous ways of doing it. One of the cool things is that at the time of launch, if, if you go back through films, you can go through Minority Report, you can go through Iron Man, you can go through Star Wars. It's a different visual concept of what it would be like to view something in an optical depth light field. And so that's what we're going to be able to do. There's going to be different ways of being able to perceive that volume within our system now that we have, you know, this unique projection device. Um, so you'll actually have control over that system. But we can we can do a lot now with neuroadaptive artificial intelligence, being able to read out saturation levels, placement levels in photos and videos, and to be able to separate out layers and, and phase them properly in a depth field. Very cool. We're chatting with Taylor Scott. He's the founder and CTO at a company called Icon, they have this ecosystem, this platform that is going to debut and we'll chat with him about when. It's called Rise, spelled R-Y-Z. And Taylor, by the way, is only 28 years old and he applied for his first patent at age 15. Is that true? Well, it was a, it was an abysmal failure. Um, <laughs> it doesn't matter. I think that's still impressive. You're not only a scientist under 30, but you obviously have been doing this for almost half your life. It's fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So let's talk about some of the applications for seeing and interacting with a hologram. It's one thing to, to do it just because you can, but what are some of the real world applications uh, do you see? And I know there's a video, by the way, that I encourage our listeners to check out on YouTube. Just type in ICAN, I-K-I-N, and then 
Roman R Y Z to see it. But maybe you can walk us through, since it's radio, what you envision uh, we'd be turning into holograms or using holograms for. Yeah, Icon is really built on a dichotomy uh, by himself and our CEO Joe Ward. So I'm the I was the 25 year old that specifically invented this system so I could play Legend of Zelda and Super Mario Brothers as a video game in a hologram in volume. <laughs> uh, awesome. That was the only the only goal I had. And he came in and uh, had a unique concept around B two B plays and being able to create a really dense ecosystem that had value in multiple markets. So we're currently pursuing really, really exciting relationships when it comes to both medical scanning and translation within the hologram itself, real time, um, as well as a different contracts with the Department of Defense being able to do real time um, smart uh, city systems. Wow. So we're very excited about, yeah, the B2B side of it, really, really growing and creating industrial value in holography. Again, there's a lot of devices and systems that can create volumetric light fields, but their uses in situations like that are so limited. So for us, the, it's taken us quite a few years to be able to build such a flexible, portable system, but it's really working out for us because now you can take it anywhere. You can go out in ambient light in almost any field and, and enjoy an experience, no matter what the B2B system might be. Hashtag holography. Love it. Yeah. Uh, I can even imagine like, you know, a real estate agent showing a property virtually to a potential client, like uh, where the house is hovering in 3D and they're using their hand to manipulate it and swing it around and saying, oh, this is where the pool is and this look at the driveway. You can do that theoretically as well with your with your technology. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, and we even do this now uh, with regards to some of our, our, our DOD contracts and, and creating essentially very small digital twins of large environments and being able to give them a holographic right. existence. So you really, you have a, a, a view, a portal view into a depth dimension that you did not previously have. So everything from real estate to actual architectural design is vastly improved. Can you zoom in and out, not just spin the object around? Yeah, not only can you zoom in and out, but because of, we have 15 different algorithm points that are looking at both AR libraries, you can actually move closer to the device and it will take you into the actual holographic image. And it's a very, you'll be able to see it uh, in our beta uh, in the mid of this year in June. And then with our, our launch later this year, you'll be able to actually experience moving closer to the rise and actually you will be brought in closer to the holographic environment. We, we have very... Uh, unique medical um, education systems that we're, we're, we're using right now to actually allow people to look inside the eye of a cataract surgery to educate them on what a cataract surgery would be like. And you can actually enter into the eye as you move closer to it and then move out of it. Wow, super cool. All right, so a late 2021 launch is what you're anticipating. Can you just cover, before we wrap up, again, the hardware one would need to get going? You said it plugs into the side of your smartphone. I don't know if that's iPhone and Android devices. And how big is it? Like, I mean, it's one thing if it's, if it's a brick obviously people aren't going to want to carry it around so <laughs> is it the size of a smartphone case is it a brick at this point so actually it's uh, we have a really unique patented design around how we go about uh, creating the system again with the mobile phone it's you know we did the hardest thing first i mean it's 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 significantly easier to just build an operating system around this large clunky device and have people jump onto your platform um, but to, to tag on to a device that is is aggressively slimmed down and very comfortable um, we, we took painstaking efforts to make it really beneficial. What we did was we we modulated both the external power supply that we that we provide as well as the the actual projection device to where they can be modular. You can use the battery or you can use the the rise device. It's easily detachable and attachable. We even have a unique patented magnet attachment system. So all you have to do is get them into close proximity to each other and it'll automatically connect. So we're constantly giving you that futuristic uh, feeling. But it will essentially give you the the a depth field view of another smartphone. So essentially a very condensed, yeah. very comfortable secondary screen that you, you can use. Yeah, that's fair, especially for a first generation product. Uh, because Precisely. in the videos, you don't see that device. It looks like it's just software coming, like, you know, emanating out of the phone or using the phone's camera to project it. But you will need a piece of hardware. So you think it's about the size of a smartphone, not including the battery pack, which is optional. That's fair? Uh, the battery pack is not optional. However, it is, it's a, uh, you'll be quite excited to see it uh, at the beta in June. It's not what people will be expecting. <laughs> okay. And I'm not sure if it's too early to talk pricing, but you do envision a 2021 launch? Indeed we do, yes. And we, our current go-to-market pricing is right. around 299 which both includes the external battery that oh. can power both the Rise or your mobile phone. 
Okay, that's great. All right, and then finally, the website for ICANN and to learn more about Rise for our listeners who are uh, no doubt intrigued about this. Absolutely, yeah, ICANNinc.com, and you can find quite a bit of information both on our, our B2B relationships as well as uh, follow us for our public beta and launch. All right, so that's I-K-I-N-Inc.com. Taylor Scott, great to chat with you. Congratulations on uh, your successes to date, and I'm excited to actually kick the tires on Rise in person one day. So thanks again, all the best. Uh, thank you.